I'm Julianne DeLynn Hatton, and you're listening to Faith and Reason on the Mormon Faircast. This series will discuss the Prophet Joseph Smith and the authenticity of the gospel he restored. I'll be speaking with Michael R. Ash, author of the book of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Welcome, Michael Ash. Hi, Julianne. A couple of weeks ago, we spoke about Nahom. Today, we're speaking about Bountiful. What is the connection between the two? Well, Nephi tells us that after they buried Ishmael at the place that was called Nahom, again, being a, a place that was named by other people that already lived there, that they took a nearly eastward turn as they continued their journey until they ended up at Bountiful. And so the connection, and this is where it really gets fascinating, because people can make connections between various different languages with words that sound the same. So if Nahom, NHM, was just a a similar sounding name to what we find in the Book of Mormon, it might be written off as coincidence. Now, it's harder to write it off because of all the things we talked about in the previous podcast as far as it being a burial place and it existed at the right spot on the trail and so forth. But what makes this more fascinating is right in the area of Nahom, the trail takes an eastward turn. And so Nephi is describing how they went down this trail to Nahom and then took an eastward turn to Bountiful. And that's exactly what we find on these ancient trails. And this eastward turn uh, led to the eastern, southeastern end, basically, of the Arabian Peninsula to the coastal line where Nephi said they came to Bountiful. And, and that's exactly what we find in the geography of the uh, Arabian Peninsula. Interesting. Now, critics say, one particular critic said, Arabia is bountiful in sunshine, petroleum, sand, heat, and fresh air, but certainly not in much fruit and also wild honey. What do we know now about bountiful? Yeah, you know, for in Joseph Smith's day, all the best books uh, that were available to him talked about how either Arabia was uh, completely this big desert, that nothing lived there, that birds uh, died in midair because of the heat, or, or there was a few um, writers in Joseph Smith's day that talked about how there were some sort of uh, coconut jungles and, and things that uh, were almost like a fantasy land. Neither one of them match what we find in the real world in Arabia, at least on, on the coast. Now, most of Arabia does have this arid climate, and, and so uh, this critic, when he says that it's sunshine and petroleum, he's correct for most of Arabia. But what he didn't know, and what most and people in Joseph Smith's day in his world didn't know at all, in Americas is that there was a there's a very lush coastal region on the Arabian Peninsula that matches what we find in Bountiful. Now where is this area? There's a very small area, what they call the Dofar Coast. It's on the southeast end of the Arabian Peninsula. And there's several different spots along there that are lush, that are that are green. And so you, you go from this arid desert climate, and then you just end up on the coast. All of a sudden, you have this, uh, this lush land. And, and what makes this fascinating is that Nephi gives a description about it. Well, he just he doesn't just say we came to this lush green area, but he talks about how they had to build a ship and they had flint for making their tools and and, and he in fact he mentions uh, fruit and honey, okay? Well, there's a spot right in what would have been an inlet in in Nephi's time where they could have launched a ship that has all the features that are described in the Book of Mormon. There's wild honey, there's fresh water, there's springs there, there's there's these uh, trees that go, you know, 40 feet in circumference that could be cut down to make a ship. In fact, there's cliffs nearby there that would have matched what Nephi says that his brothers, they were mad at him for all their troubles, then they were going to throw him into the ocean. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, and if, you you know, anybody that's been to the beach, you don't throw somebody into the surf. From a sand dune. Yeah, yeah, you're not, (laughs) you know, right there in the sand and you throw them in. That doesn't mean anything. To throw somebody in the ocean, there has to be some sort of cliffs or something there. And we find this, uh, and this particular region is called Kor Karfalt, and it's a, a very fertile area, and it has everything that matches what we find in the Book of Mormon. In fact, geologists have found nearby iron deposits and forms of flint, which Nephi said, you know, they had in order to to fashion tools. And that's also been a criticism, is that how could Nephi have found iron? 
I exactly, exactly. So all the all the criticisms have backfired. And now the actual archaeological support for what we find in the Arabia Peninsula matches uh, exactly what's described in the Book of Mormon. Thank you, Michael Ash. Thank you, Julianne. Thanks for listening to Faith and Reason on the Mormon Faircast. I'm your host, Julianne Delin Hatton, inviting you to keep the faith. Michael R. Ash is the author of the book, Shaken Faith Syndrome, Strengthening One's Testimony in the Face of Criticism and Doubt, as well as the book of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Faith and Reason is produced by Tom Hatton with music courtesy of Arthur Hatton. The opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of Fair Mormon or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You can support this podcast by subscribing to it in iTunes and by rating it and writing a review. Questions or comments can be sent to podcast at fairmormon.org or you may join the conversation at fairblog.org.